Robert Aspen, head of equities investment strategy at Standard Chartered, believes there's a lot more foreign investors can do in Indian markets. Mini sat down with him and began by asking him if he thought that the worst was over for the Indian currency. We think the worst is over for the moment. I think, I th I think that's, at, at the end of the day, there's, like you mentioned, there's a lot going on. So you right now have the uh, debt ceiling discussion in the U.S. Yeah. You also have the, f the federal budget being discussed in the U.S. with the deadline coming up very shortly. And then you also have the current account uh, deficit, uh, which is ongoing in, in India. So there's a lot of moving parts of this. One of the key moving par parts within the Indian context is what will the government do about the current account deficit? So they've already increased taxes on gold imports, I believe, to around 15%. Yeah. That should be, uh, that should have quite a negative consequence in terms of imports of gold into the economy, which should help the current account deficit. That's one area. But I think what they really need to focus on is developing FDI, bringing in uh, foreign investment, whether that be in the retail space, the infrastructure space, etc. There's a lot that foreigners can be doing in this market, and they need to fast track some of that very, very mm. quickly. Let's break it down to sectors, Aditya. Sure. The theme that comes through from our conversation is that anything pegged towards uh, a more global European recovery or U.S. recovery is, is what you're betting on. And in India, you're betting on the IT sector because it has the uh, effects of the depreciating rupee also in a positive yes. way. What's your outlook over here and what do you like about it? Well, we've liked technology now for uh, approximately six months, I think. And, and initially, it was on the, on the fact that we saw growth coming in and valuations are extremely attractive across the technology mm -hmm. sector. Uh, more recently, we've liked technology because of the, the hedge against uh, FX weakness, and that's played out very nicely. Going forward, what we see is the fact that you have a huge number of contracts that are going to be open mm -hmm. for uh, renegotiation coming up in the next five years, something like $200 billion worth of deal flow. Mm -hmm. And we take the view that that's a, a, an approximately 30 to $35 billion opportunity for the local IT firms over the next five years, and many of these projects and deals will be new, so it will be incremental growth. So although valuations have actually picked up significantly given the rally, uh, we see uh, continued growth within the space over the next but five years. But a lot years. of vicious competition on the pricing front for many of yes. these deals. It's not going to be as easy as that $200 billion uh, number indicates. Uh, so um, within the basket, uh, is it the frontline big guys that uh, you're saying are better uh, positioned to cash in on this? We do like the, the larger players, yes. Mm -hmm. And we do like uh, one or two of the players that have undertaken acquisitions in the, in the past year or so. We think that the synergies from that will actually under, you know, perform, uh, perform very well for them. Mm -hmm. Two other very, very important uh, sectors from the mm -hmm. Indian context, especially after what we've seen, uh, is the financial and the banking sector mm -hmm. on one hand and the infrastructure play, which has really been beaten down. And a lot mm -hmm. of people were expecting that, you know, it can't get worse than this. It's only going to get better, and maybe we could see some improvement out there. That's not really played out. So let's start over the banking now, mm -hmm. especially with the current uh, rate regime, et cetera. What is your outlook on banking as such? We're, we're neutral to marginally underweight uh, the financial space at this point in time. And we actually do find a lot of very good value within the, um, the, the government-run mm -hmm. banks. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I know that's an area that most investors are extremely concerned about. But we, when, when you look at the underlying price-to-book ratios, we would take the view that a lot of the bad news is already priced in. We are watching that very closely because NPL ratios are likely to pick up very, very rapidly over the next uh, half year to, to one year further out. So if you're looking to play the banks um, and you, you're not looking to take much risk, then we'd recommend uh, definitely the private sector banks, the high quality banks. Mm. But there is very good value to be found within some of the government run banks. Many of these uh, stocks are dirt cheap right now, yes. Robert. But my question is that the big fear out there is the NPL bomb. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a ticking bomb because nothing seems to have improved on the macro front, especially yes. with the infrastructure project delays, etc. Yes. What is the inherent risk that you see out there? Well, NPLs will definitely pick up. That, that's one thing yeah, we, we do see. We do. But how much of that is already priced in is the real question you're asking. And when you look at some of the government banks, they're trading at around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 times price to book, which is one of the key measures that we use to value the banking sector. Mm -hmm. So we would take, a, uh, take the view that a lot of the bad news is already priced in, because even if you discount book, these banks are still trading well below one. Um, on the inf infrastructure space, I mean, many of the stocks, again, are dirt cheap. I mean, mm -hmm. they have massive debt on their books and their, mm -hmm. you know, equity market returns are very uh, weak. So mm -hmm. uh, what sense are you getting? I mean, because there we've been on the brink of a crisis for a long time. 
Yeah, so there I think one has to be very stock specific. You have to look through the market and, and find individual names. Uh, some of the names that we like have focus um, on the global markets as well. So just like the technology space, mm -hmm. they're able to derive quite a bit of their revenues and profits from outside of India, which is obviously a positive, uh, both from an FX standpoint and also from a growth standpoint. And uh, one or two of the names that we look at have exposure, for example, to the Middle East, which is still uh, a growth area. So yeah, one has to be very selective in that, in that uh, space.